Welcome back to another episode of our mini series on pipeline survey techniques. I'm joined again with Neil Webb, an expert on cathodic protection, and today we're going to tackle the topic of PCM or pipeline current mapping. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more of these videos. Let's start right at the beginning. Neil, could you give us a brief history on how the PCM technique came about? Well, as you rightly said, PCM stands for Pipeline Current Mapper, and that is actually a trade name of a particular instrument that was developed by a company called Radio Detection. And the development came about because it was found necessary to be able to trace pipelines over a, a significant distance. Historically, this had been done using pipe locators, which are very similar to cable locators. You inject a, a signal into the pipeline or the cable or whatever, an AC signal, an alternating current signal, and you pick up that signal by means of a radio antenna rather than by contact with the ground. And that was the purpose of this development, was that there are many situations where you cannot take measurements on the ground. If a pipeline is under a tarmac or under concrete surfaces, any hard surface like that, it makes getting any reasonable data about the pipeline from surface measurements virtually impossible. Mm. So the, the necessity was to be able to remotely detect and trace these pipelines. Now, one of the problems of AC is that it attenuates fairly rapidly as the signal passes down the pipeline. Secondly, the AC signal is radiated from the pipe, which it has to be, so you can pick it up by your, your detectors above the pipeline, but it means that it also then interacts with other structures in the ground, which also gives rise to challenges in using conventional pipe location equipment. So the pipeline current mapper uses a very, very low frequency AC. It's actually only four hertz. Okay. That's four cycles per second. And the characteristic of this signal is that it behaves very much like the DC of a cathodic protection system. Right. The current mapper literally does exactly what its name says. It maps, maps the, current. the current. And you can follow the signal for many, many kilometers because it doesn't dissipate over the pipeline. But because it is an electrical signal, it will dissipate and the rate of dissipation is determined by the characteristic of the coating, the presence of defects in that coating where it allows the signal to discharge to earth and also more importantly foreign contacts. Okay. So in networks particularly say gas distribution networks where you've got a main running down the street and there's an off take down this side road and one down that side road and so on. Every one of these, some of that signal will disappear along with the pipeline. So the pipeline current mapper then quantitatively allows you to determine the distribution of the current in your pipeline system. Right. And from that point of view, it is an absolutely fantastic and I would say almost irreplaceable Technique, technique right. yeah, yeah. Now, you mentioned AC attenuation. What does that mean? Well, AC attenuation, attenuation means decrease in intensity. Okay? So as the signal travels down the pipeline from its point of insertion or injection, the signal strength will decrease. It will attenuate. Okay. Right? And by measuring the level of attenuation, you can pick up anomalies in the pipeline. So if you had a completely uniform pipeline with a completely uniform coating on it in completely uniform soil, and you ejected a signal at this point, you would get a long, smooth gradient of signal strength. In other words, a constant rate of attenuation. Right gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes. At a constant rate. At a constant rate. If, however, you have a problem on the pipeline, say, for example, let's use a situation of a pipeline that has been wrapped and it's installed and the valve 
has been placed into a dry concrete chamber and the pipeline is insulated from the chamber wall, so everything's fine. Now, if that chamber was to become flooded due to a storm or maybe a leaking valve on a water pipeline, that would represent a large area of good electrical contact with the soil, which will cause a localized increase in dissipation of the signal. Okay. And so this attenuation curve, instead of just being like that, as it comes past the chamber, it's going to like do that. Dip. And you get, get an infection in the curve. And that then is indicative of an issue. It could be a coating defect. Now, how does PCM differ from other survey techniques like DCVG or SIPs? Well, the most important thing is it is that it is a non-contact survey. Okay. So the the detection equipment, because of the nature of the signal being such low frequency, they use what's known as a magnetometer to detect the signal strength. But it is not something that you measure in contact with the soil. You place the instrument on the ground for stability because the thing is very sensitive to moving Maybe around. Not. But you are not actually taking a measurement on the soil. Okay. And that's the biggest difference. Right. So therefore, you can use it to survey pipelines under hard surfaces, under tarmac, under concrete. Under um, roads, yeah. And yeah. Under roads, yeah. Right. The advantage of the low-frequency signal is twofold. Firstly, it travels a very long distance compared to a higher frequency. And secondly, it enables you to emulate what a cathodic protection system would do in the same pipeline. So you can almost model your cathodic protection system behavior by injecting a PCM signal on the pipe and mapping it out. Hmm. Now, you've already mentioned that a big advantage of PCM is that it's a non-contact survey technique mm. and you can do it over areas of pipeline that would be otherwise inaccessible. Yeah. What are some other advantages of this technique? For me, its major advantage is that it traces current. And so when you have a pipeline system where you, your cathodic protection system is not performing as it should, You've got to find out why not. And one of the ways of doing that is to say, well, where is the cathodic protection current going? So in order to do that, you connect the PCM signal generator at the same location as you would have an impressed current cathodic protection system. And you inject the PCM signal into the pipe. Now you've got a signal that you can measure its strength remotely mm. because you don't need contact with the pipe. Whereas with cathodic protection, you've got to have you contact, contact with the pipe and contact with the ground. So you can now go off and follow the signal. You go along, going along, going along, all of a sudden there's no signal. Well, it's gone. So you backtrack, pick it up, and then you go around in a circle. And you'll usually find that maybe there is an offtake that nobody knew about, or it is an offtake that used to be insulated, and has now been, somebody did some maintenance on it and they forgot to reinsert the insulating joint. And so now that is draining current off into maybe a facility where you've got a, a big earthing system and the current is just going and, and disappearing. The most common thing that we see is foreign contacts where the signal strength suddenly decreases. It's an indication that you've had a foreign contact if there were no branches Awful, something like that, yeah. Okay. So PCM can kind of help you get a broad idea of your pipeline. Is it useful at all to pinpoint the exact location of defects? I'll probably get shot for saying this, but I would say no. Right. It's not a survey that I would use to pinpoint defects. Okay. The PCM equipment is primarily useful in tracking pipelines and systems and in getting an overview of the condition of the pipeline. Because say you take, you've got a 50 kilometer long pipeline and you want to say, assess this pipeline quickly. Have I got problem areas? Well, you go inject a PCM signal and you take a, a reading every five kilometers or every 500 meters. Mm -hmm. And you can characterize it and you can say, okay, well, of that 50 kilometers, I see that I've got an area of 
seven kilometers over here where I'm losing a lot of signal. I'm going to go back and do a more intensive survey there. But okay. you don't do that survey with PCM. Okay. Yeah. The difficulty that a lot of people have in differentiating what the survey can do and not do is that the PCM equipment has another facility, which is ACVG. So you, because you've got this very competent signal analysis system, you can, instead of measuring signal strength using a magnetometer, you can measure signal strength by using two probes in the ground. Okay. And we go back to now a contact situation, which in this case is an AC voltage gradient. And the AC voltage gradient then can be used to pinpoint. So you can use the PCM equipment. But a different survey. But it's a different survey okay. technique. All right. Yeah. So that would be a situation where almost using a combined survey would be helpful. You can use the PCM to get a broad idea yeah. of your pipeline and then ACVG. And then you go back, yeah. So one of the common approaches that we use is to do a PCM survey of the pipeline to get the broad overview and then go back with DCVG. And we prefer DCVG over ACVG because we find that the ACVG tends to be oversensitive. Mm, okay. Now, with most surveys, your accuracy of your results depends on the operator's ability to interpret the data correctly. What are some common misinterpretations with PCM? Sure. The more common misinterpretations we find with the equipment are related to its use in the ACVG mode rather than in the pipeline mapping mode. I'm not really aware of any particular problems in the mapping mode. It is quite challenging if you're using the equipment in an area with a lot of parallel pipelines where you may have bonds between pipelines and you'll find that the signal is traveling in this direction on that pipeline and in this direction on the pipeline next door to it. So that can make interpretation very difficult. Right. Yes. But with care, you can literally do exactly what the equipment name says. You can map right. okay. where the current is going. And that to me is the primary purpose, purpose. of this equipment. Mm. Yeah. Now, before we wrap up, is there any other points about PCM that you think is important for potential future PCM operators to know? It's not a silver bullet, I think. Okay. No okay. technique is a silver bullet. True. And we do find that some people tend to harp on a technique purely because they possess that equipment. And that is something that I would caution against in terms of selecting survey techniques is you don't use a technique because you've got the equipment. Okay. Uh, you use the most appropriate technique for the results that you want to mm. obtain. I think that's quite important to remember. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that wraps up our, our discussion on PCM. If you found this conversation insightful or helpful at all, don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for more episodes of our Pipeline Survey Techniques mini-series. Thank you.